This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Today's guest is an advocate for empathy. I'm joined by Michael Andrews, who's the author of The Influential Christian, Learning to Lead from the Heart. He shares examples of how the men who followed Jesus were empathetic, and that is a key piece to ministering to others. And you practice being empathetic, uh, Michael. You, um, it just seems like one of those things that should come naturally, but it should come, I mean, our hearts should naturally say we want to do it, but how do we learn to do it? That's a perfect question because uh, a lot of folks do uh, suggest that empathy is an innate trait, that mm -hmm. some people have it and some people don't. I don't believe that's true. I believe empathy is more like a virtue. It's the sort of thing that um, we can work on practices that move us into that direction. And not only is it like a virtue, it's almost like a, a, a discipline, a spiritual discipline, in that when we start to work in that direction, the Holy Spirit helps guide us mm -hmm. and work with us to make us more that way as well. So I think it is something that can be developed uh, by our own practice and by the help of the Holy Spirit yeah. uh, to make us more empathetic. Right. Well, one, one prerequisite that you bring up in chapter four is, is being open to our, in our, in our thinking, valuing the other person. I, I really like this quote that you had in there. Uh, you have uh, from, I think it's uh, Elena Aguilera. Ag Ag Yep, Aguaria. Uh, the, 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 the quote is, uh, no one can learn from you if you, th if you think they suck. So <laughs> we, we really have to develop a value for that person, right? I mean, we have, to, we have to value all the people that we're communicating with. That's right. Yeah, influence they, they is about... They understand that if we don't. They'll sense yeah, it. Influence is, yeah, influence is about connecting with people. And, and in order to connect with people, we need to uh, listen and value and understand the other person. Otherwise, it's just a temporary kind of persuasion. So as we're listening, uh, what I mean, we're, we're, we're listening to the person, but what are we actively doing in our spirit as we're, as we're listening to this person and processing what they're telling us? I, I, think, I think what we're doing is showing that we care, that mm -hmm. uh, love is what drives us, um, and that we want to understand them for who they are and, and what they're doing, not not just about our own agenda, mm -hmm. but we care more than just about ourselves. And, and that really reaches people when, when the goal is to love and value people yeah. rather than just to pursue our own agenda. Um, a good example is in the Bible in Acts 17 where Paul uh, comes to a city of Berea and, and they are just really uh, predisposed to listen to what he has to say and to be receptive to what he's saying. And they are really... A, a good example for us of how we can be. Yeah. I think uh, uh, people understand that. I mean, listening isn't just keeping our mouth shut, posing our next response to this person, but it really is. Uh, I think people understand that if they're sharing from their heart and you're listening to it, you're receiving something valuable from them. You're receiving a, a, a part of who they are. And we should show yes. that and in, in, in that we appreciate the fact that they're, that they're, they're sharing part of, of, of themselves. Yes. And, and, and in that relationship, we begin to act like an apprentice to them. I talk a good deal in chapter four of my book about uh, becoming an apprentice rather than just a mentor. There's a lot of discussion about being mentors in our mm -hmm. culture, and that's important. Nobody really talks much about being an apprentice. And, and yet, in order to understand people and value them, really the position we need to be in is apprenticing to them to understand who they are and what they're about. Yeah, that, that would be, I mean, I've been a mentor. I am a mentor right now with, some, uh, with a young child. And uh, that, that, that is a different way of looking at it. We put ourselves in a different position. And uh, you mentioned two things that are needed to develop good listening skills. I have a tough time with, <laughs> I, I think, with the first of myself. Relinquishing control, temporarily suspending yeah. our own narrative, and then yeah. uh, respectfully protect each other's identity. Uh, number one is very difficult for me uh, at times to relinquish control. I'm a natural talker. Uh, my wife's a natural listener. And uh, uh, I, I've got I've to relinquish that control sometime and, and set aside my own narrative to hear what's, what uh, the other person is, is, is trying to share. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, our, our own narrative is important, but it gets in the way of us hearing the other person's narrative. And if we really want to connect, both narratives, ours and theirs, should be regarded as significant. And, and so that means that we need to kind of not, not put our narrative aside, 
but to just give it less importance while we understand what the other person is about so that we don't impose ourselves on them. Yeah, I, I think this, this day of social media, uh, it's, it's, it's like a free-for-all sometimes. You just get online and let your feelings fly. You say whatever you want. Uh, we're not required to listen. And you think all this has negatively affected, uh, uh, I won't say generally, but uh, a lot of people's ability to even listen because they're so used to just letting things fly on the Internet with, without any repercussions sometimes. Right. The, the model and the example that people see when they go to, to – uh, social media is that uh, listening is not uh, valued or important or it's just you know just putting out your own propositions and your own thoughts and your own feelings mm -hmm. are all that matters and, and the way to engage is to just to say is just to talk more loudly and, and yet and yet that doesn't really connect with people well let's talk about reflective engagement a little bit because one of the things that we, we need to reflect on and, and engage with is uh, it's a receptive engagement, being receptive to God. I mean, first yes. of all, if we want to be that influential Christian, we've, we've got to be receptive to how God's leading us. Yes. Yes, we need to listen to him even more than we listen to the <laughs> other people. Um, and so our listening skills, I think we begin to hone with other people and with God. What is, what is our prayer life like? And how does that reflect what our engagement with other people mm -hmm. is like? Well, we're, we're reflective and, and uh, with, with God. And how about community then? Uh, how, do we, how do we transcend? Uh, we, we go from God and we're listening to God and we're, we're in prayer. But now we're out in community and the, and the, 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 the exchange isn't exactly the same. How, we, how can we be reflective and engage in community then? You know, that becomes a real um, challenge for empathy because empathy is kind of a person-to-person -person kind of connection. It's harder to... Um, be empathetic with a group, although I think it's important. And so we need to listen to what groups have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there are individuals who are telling us what that group is saying. So we need to listen to them, particularly when that group is saying something different than our uh, home embedded group mm -hmm. is saying. So if there's some cultural difference between the groups, he, to hear what they are saying and to hear the lead voices. Yeah. So in this last part of the book, you, 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 you focus on, on three areas. One is that that reception, and then we, we, we receive it, we reflect on it, then we respond to it. How do those things, uh, how, would you, how would that play out in a conversation or in a relationship with a, a person that maybe you just met, they're, they're a new person at work, and you're trying to develop that, uh, that relationship? How do those three things play out? Right. Um, I, I think they rarely play out entirely in a single conversation, mm -hmm. a single dialogue. I think what we're setting up is a relationship that once we begin to value one another, then there's a relationship there in which we can begin to um, think together, uh, think critically together. And when I say critically, I don't mean negatively. I mean examining the things that are important to both of us, uh, not just to me, but to the other person as well. And so reflection is a matter of discovering what our assumptions are, what our opinions are, what our rules are, how we interpret all those things um, and what we find when we start to examine our assumptions together is that a lot of times, the, you know, people who think that we are, people with whom we think we are very different, sometimes we're not as different as we think we are. We really want kind of the same things. It's just that how we have gone about getting them or pursuing them isn't necessarily the same avenue. And therefore, we get friction with the other person because our choice of paths is different. But so when we explore our assumptions, we begin to understand why we're different or why we're the same. Yeah. And that really, I think, is what's missing in our polarized cultures, that we're not examining what, what lies belie beneath the things that we're saying. What, yeah, what we, what we really believe in, in that case. Uh, a lot of people could be intimidated by, uh, they, they, they want to do this, they, they, they see the examples of, of Christ. And the apostles in the Bible of in, in encountering people in, in, uh, in these areas. What if someone's a natural introvert? What are, what's the best way for them to even begin this process with, with open-ended questions, the kind of things that Christ did? Well, I, I think all of us need connection and friendships. People that, who, with whom we can reflect together, uh, introverts, extroverts, it, it really doesn't matter. Empathy is not about... Uh, being an extrovert. It's about 
caring about mm-hmm. people. And quite often, introverts care more than the extroverts do. So it's uh, you know it, it varies quite a bit. So um, I think we need to develop the kind of friendships where we can really, um, as Proverbs twenty seven says, iron sharpens iron, mm-hmm. um, where we help each other with the difficult things that we're going through. And in order to do that, we need to value each other. Yeah. Well, in order to develop those relationships, those friendships, uh, there's some tough things in there. I mean, you got to be vulnerable. You got to be willing to forgive. You got to be willing to look at uh, let's let's build this relationship in a in a healthy way. Uh, there's there's a there there's I mean, it's not work. It should come naturally to us. But at the same time, there's some things that that might not be com- comfortable for us. That's right. And it's the kind of work that really pays off better than anything else does. Because when we have those kinds of people in our lives, the people that we have influential relationships long term, there's there's really nothing more in our life that gives uh, meaning to our lives more than those kinds of relationships. Let's talk about response for just a minute. Uh, the relationship is developed and, and we're, we're working on those things. Uh, there, there's several ways we can respond uh, before and after, I mean, during and, and after those conversations. What, yes. what, how, how do we, how would you, you, you frame the, the responses of, of, of a new relationship? It, you know, we use the word um, response and some uh, similar derivative words in, in a number of ways. Uh, we talk about a response, which is usually just a reaction to some event. Mm-hmm. But we also talk about re- being responsive, which means that we... Uh, have certain interpersonal and intercultural relationships that are important to us that we want to um, attend to. And then there's the term responsibility, yeah. which um, includes all the social aspects around us. And so the question we need to ask ourselves is how do the responses we make to other people communicate our responsibility to the other person mm-hmm. or to the or how, how are our responses commuting, communicating something about what we value? Yeah, and it, uh, I, think it was, I think it was Watchman Nee, there's a quote that says, I, I become responsible for and to the, the, the one I love. And yes. uh, uh, if it really is motivated out of, the, out of the love, out of our love for Christ to love people, as he's called us to do, love God and love your neighbor, uh, then we do have a, a responsibility that, that, that comes out of that relationship. Yes, and, and we find that uh, res- being responsible to people is even more important than being responsible for people. Because mm-hmm. when we are responsible for people, we tend to kind of stand over them and do things for them. Right. But when we're responsible to people, we're more willing to work with them uh, side by side and do something mutually uh, constructive together. Well, they've, they've uh, in this conversation, in this, in this relationship, as we've gone through this, they've shared life with us. And we're yes. responsible for those, uh, those things we've learned about them. We're responsible to, to treasure those things and to treat them with, uh, with love and care. Right, right. And, and, and the New Testament has such a perfect example of that relationship in the Good Samaritan, Luke 10. Um, you know, what goes on there between the Samaritan and the, and, and the Jewish person who's been mm-hmm. wounded, realizing that the Samaritan is somebody who is despised by the yeah. Jews— and yet that, that interaction, that empathetic relationship can take place because the, one, of the, one side decides to reach out and do something um, yeah. beneficial. Yeah, what's, what's uh, uh, both sides of that teaching, uh, the Good Samaritan doing his, his thing, but the, uh, uh, the Jew receiving that from someone who's, who his, his, his people despise. It's tough yes. to receive something from somebody that you don't appreciate. Yes, yes. And that's why this whole process begins with valuing people. Yeah, valuing people. Well, Michael, thank you for being with us today. Again, the, the book is The Influential, Influential Christian, Learning to Lead from the Heart, and uh, it will get you thinking about how you relate and, and communicate with the people around you. Thank you again, Doctor. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed this discussion a lot. After the break. Everybody got laid off. Well, in the process of me getting laid off, uh, I got hired as a part-time chaplain to Marketplace Chaplain. It's a come alongside ministry. So we go right into the organization and come alongside people. That's coming up next on Viewpoint. Would you like to help expand the reach of Viewpoint with Bob Placey? Then sign in with your YouTube account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. 
By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now would do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places that missionaries can't even reach. Thank you for helping us reach the world by sharing Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Viewpoint with Bob Placey is now available as a podcast. Download your favorite podcast app like iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify and search for Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Subscribe and listen as we discuss these important topics each week. In a culture where employers might often try to keep Christ out, this couple has found a way to bring him back in, all with permission of the business owners. My guest is Veronica and Aaron McLaurin. When, I, when we first met, you were kind of involved in that, this ministry we we're going to talk about because we went to a luncheon together and you guys had just come in off of a factory floor. <laughs> it's the Marketplace Chaplaincy. Okay, so the Marketplace Chaplaincy came about, I was working at my job of something like 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. uh, got laid off because of a back injury and it was just that season to where the economy had took a turn and yeah. uh, everybody got laid off. Well, in the process of me getting laid off, uh, I got hired as a part-time chaplain, mm -hmm. the Marketplace Chaplains. And it was then, you know, that I began to uh, really get into the Word a little bit more and began to go outside the church walls mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and into the uh, uh, Marketplace and began to minister through that, which is a wonderful thing. Isn't it amazing how when, <laughs> when God does call you to something like that, it drives you to the Word? You say, I, 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 I wanted does. to get deeper in the Word because yes. people are starting to ask you questions and people are starting to find, you know, yes. really get serious about your walk with Christ. How did He call you into the same? I mean, because yeah. that was fine for Aaron, but you busy, you had a job, you, yeah. you were ordained minister as well. Absolutely. About six years after Aaron, mm -hmm. um, economy was still taking a bad turn. And there needed to be some cuts, and we, you know, I just said, Let, "Let's do it. It's here." And so um, I walked into the same thing. I think it was no more than six months. I knew God was calling me mm -hmm. into the ministry of the marketplace as well. An opportunity came up, and I prayed about it, and I went for it. Wow! So. T tell me about the ministry itself, Marketplace Chaplaincy, because I, you know, I've been in, involved in Christian ministries for quite a while. I won't tell you how long, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, had never heard of Of course, there's a lot of them you never hear of, but uh, I had never heard of it. Tell me about it. It's a wonderful ministry. Uh, and the way it kind of works is we go into the marketplace mm -hmm. or into the company uh, once a week, uh, and we walk through the entire plant, and we hold small, short conversations with people throughout the day, and we mm -hmm. ask them how their day is going and mm -hmm. this and that. And we don't expect or suspect uh, that they will reach out and say, hey, this is going on. But over time, we build a trust. We, we, we build yeah. a trust with the people, with the company and organization. Mm -hmm. And we might come over and we might visit a person. They may be fine those two or three weeks, but that one week, uh, they may have lost a loved mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, and that loved one may have been lost. They may have lost a loved one two cities over, like, you know, we oh, yeah. here in Lima, and they may have lost somebody in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Well, they can share that with us because, you know, you know, the, the, manage, the management has already shared, this person has lost somebody, uh, could you go over there and check up on them? We hold that conversation, they got their mindset on what has happened in Cleveland. Well, I could pray with that person right here in town, and then I can make a phone call, and within an hour or so, somebody in the Cleveland area another chaplain and can go and visit that person at the hospital. Now, that struggle of that loved ones alone is, all, is by themselves. Mm -hmm. They now got God and, and, it, and it just it's does a great a, connection. It's so a great the connection. Is, the network is there. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So it's a national, national ministry. National ministry. It's a come alongside ministry. So we go right into the organization mm -hmm. and come alongside people right where they are, the women, the men, um, they try to have a male and female chaplain at each site or organization. Mm -hmm. And you just come right alongside them. Most of the employees are just like, I can't believe I can <laughs> just have somebody yeah. to talk to while I'm working. They love it. How did it feel walking out on the factory floor that first time? Well, I tell you, it was a little intimidating because you're walking through spaces where 
they're slicing pork and they're, you know, creating melting uh, plastic tubes. And so you're, you, you actually dress like them. So you put on the smock and you go in as a person, you come mm -hmm. right where they are. And God makes it really easy to talk because they don't find you threatening. You're mm -hmm. not in your, you know, your suit and tie. Mm -hmm. You just come right where they are. And um, one of the things that you don't do is you, you don't just start, Jesus Christ loves you <laughs> and you need to know him. And uh, you don't slap them over the head with the Bible. Bible yeah. um, you just come right where they are and you ask, how's your day? How are things going? What kind of response do you get from the employers? <laughs> from the, the, well, they say maybe the employers all for it, but the production manager or somebody mm -hmm. like that who's, mm -hmm. you may be interrupting a little bit of his production that day. What, what kind of responses you're getting? Well, uh, it all depends on the day. Some mm -hmm. days uh, it's hurry up and get that product out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other days it may be hurry up and get that product out, but I'm so glad that you came because yeah. The morale, the uh -huh. tension, mm -hmm. life just overtaken. And it's, you know, when when you go and talk about organizations and companies, you're talking about groups of people, cliques, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so, with one person affect, it may affect maybe four or five different people. Yeah. And so, we have that, you know, those four or five different people that it has affected. The manager may not have very much control over that person or group. And so when we come in, we can stir that whole atmosphere into a positive thing. And so there's some times we come in and they say, just do what you do. Other yeah. times we have <laughs> to get the product out. So it all depends on yeah. the day, but we we certainly have those moments mm -hmm. and we enjoy them. So we're, we're the town that you're in, you got, you're you into what, three or four different plants? Three or four different ones right now. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And an insurance company as well. Yeah. So how do you how do you make that? Do you have to make that contact with the manufacturer, with the marketplace? Do you, I mean, is that part of your your responsibility? Well, actually, we have a, a supervisor, and they're they're kind of like the EDO. They're they're the director of a certain region, mm -hmm. and they contact companies. They're constantly um, marketing to try to get more companies to join, mm -hmm. and then they just assign us as chaplains to those companies. What are the kind of mistakes that somebody might be able to might might make if they're over enthusiastic when they walk on that floor? Trying to um, get in front of God, trying to um, um, beat the person over the head with the Bible. Yeah. Uh, Jesus this or God that. Trying and to be God for them or that's absolutely, right. yeah. uh, that's the worst mistake that you can make because most of the time people they want to do a good job. Because obviously they, they're at work. Uh, and then they also, um, they would love to share. Because mm -hmm. we're people, that's just part of our nature. We want to share certain things and how things are going, sure. whether it's good, bad, or ugly. It's, it's not until, you know, when you open up that line of communication, how's your day going, and begin to talk directly to them and not about something that they may know about or that they may not know about. It's not until when you come to them yeah. and say, how you doing and, and hold that nice conversation with them and they begin to pour out and share mm -hmm. because what happens is you're building the trust, mm -hmm. you're building the relationships, you're building the confidence, everything that you know as a person you're starting to build because they see you on a day, daily basis, mm -hmm. they see you on a consistent time, you know, he's here every day at this time, he's asking the same. He must yeah. really like me, he must really like his job. Let me share and if there is a God, let me see what God can do something like this here. Now, the way they think and the way they put things together, people or mine is just totally whack sometimes. <laughs> yeah. and we, we just, we yeah. got our own way of thinking. Yes. And sometimes we got to bring it back to the biblical, yeah. you know, I, I'm, most of the time I'm saying, you know, it's fine for you to think that way, mm -hmm. but this is how the word of God says it. And I explained, hear what they have to say and then I explain the word of God and then we just meet somewhere in the middle yeah, I and I believe that meeting in the middle is the Holy Spirit saying now this is how I'm going to bring this together and this is how I'm going to get the glory and now that experience of the Holy Ghost the Spirit you know, the spirit of what you was talking about it's like I'm so glad I talked to them yeah. I'm so now they're yeah. looking for a relationship sure. on their own with God because they just well, had that experience. Yeah. You mentioned relationship, and that's how that's how Jesus was in. I mean, that's how he would would come to people in a, in a relationship attitude. He'd absolutely, break bread with them. Or absolutely, or, there are there relationships that that really continued on that you that you can look back on and say now that 
that relationship is developed, that person really has grown closer to Christ. Oh yes, um, there are times when you speak with individuals on the floor and you can see the anxiousness on them. There's so many young people struggling mm -hmm. with anxiety and being in the workplace and trying to work. Um, there's one individual that I was able to continue to connect with and you see them now getting yeah. stronger at work and they're confident. Yes, it's just a blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. It is. It's, and it's all about the relationship. That's Absolutely. Right. A lot of times they want things to happen just yeah. like that. And the blessing in that is that you get to explain and share with them nothing just happens just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a day-to-day -day process. Mm -hmm. And it's going it, the relationship is that you got to get up and you got to ask God to help you to get help through you each do day. Mm -hmm. And the things that you feel like there's a void or that you're missing, you're going to ask God for those. Because that's how you build relationships. Sure. That's mm -hmm. how you actually walk, you know, in a relationship mm -hmm. with God. And so when, when, when I look back over some of the stories that, yeah. you know, people was going through, I'm talking about the loss of a loved one mm -hmm. or uh, a divorce or mm -hmm. they didn't think they was going to make it to the job sure. because of whatever reason. And then two or three years later, you know, we come in and they say, you know, I remember when I was going through this here. <laughs> like, yeah, God is good, man. You know, it's the, their relationship has grown. Yours has grown. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's just phenomenal how God works. Yes. Do you ever get people asking you about about the company, something that's more business oriented or they want some insider information. I mean, how do you deal with that? Is that some kind of a place where you could get really tripped up if you're not careful? You can, if you're not careful, um, just had a challenge like that this past week. Yeah. Um, but again, you just bring them back to this is, this is about you and we're here to talk about ways to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you bring it right back to the individual and what God wants to do in their life. Yeah. And you can also get so excited about the things of God sure. to where, you know, you can you you want to you want to pull it back because if you don't, it's like um, it's like, say, for instance, you're dealing with a loss of a loved one or a sick parent or a sick whatever. And it's like, oh, God's not going to let that happen. You know, you can't get, a, you know, in front of it, you know, mm -hmm. what God's going to do. But at the, at the end of the day. You can be so excited and so full of what God has done in your life, uh, you could probably give out the wrong information. You want so, to project it on them. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. You want to project your faith. Oh, I just believe God's going to do this. You just want them to be, you know, right, right. where they're at That's and right. just kind of build them. So, yes, you can, you know, sometimes get overexcited. But at the end of the day, you know, that's just one of those beginning mistakes that you have to work through when it sure. just allow the spirit to teach you. <laughs> to find out more about the workplace ministry of Veronica and Aaron, look up our show notes on the YouTube page or the website below. Viewpoint is made possible by the support of viewers just like you. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and share these shows with your friends. Thanks for joining me. I'm Bob Placey.